Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Friday version of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews. I work remotely for the Mary Burmeister Jinshin Jitsu Institute, which is the authentic source of the teachings of Mary Burmeister and Jiro Marai here in um, Phoenix, Arizona, Scottsdale, Arizona, United States of America. So welcome, welcome, everybody. Particular warm welcome to anyone who's absolutely brand new to the art of Jinshin Jitsu. Jinshin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy as it moves or not through the body. And we harmonize that by placing our hands left and right of the spine on what we call energy locks, safety energy locks. There are 26 left and right of the spine. And when they're released, they allow chi ki or life energy to flow more congruently through the channels, through the, the center, spine, the main central, and all the different organ function energies to help us live in much greater harmony and balance. So <clears throat> what's happening today? Well, um, as you know, on the Friday sessions, we practice the 36 breaths, normally in four sets of nine, with practices based on Mary Burmeister's self-help teachings. And last week we um, embraced Safety Energy Lock 13, and this week we embrace Safety Energy Lock 14. And let's have a quick look at um, the slides. And there is the information from what Mary described in Self-Help Book 2. Let's just get this correct. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she said, 14 came into the universe, meaning equilibrium and sustenance. And there you got a picture of it right and left safety energy locks underneath the right and left rib cage helps hips and thighs tension stress maintains our harmony waist up with waist down and she gives practices of how we can harmonize them but before we do that just like to draw your attention to what three of our instructors wrote in the main central in the day this book is the 0 to 26 excerpts from the main central. And so today, let's have a look and listen to what Lynn Fluger, Matthias Roth, and Walter Riga Krauser said. Lynn Fluger said, 14 is sustenance and equilibrium speaking to us on the pulse level, a stomach function and gallbladder, gallbladder function energy. Stomach digests that which we ingest through the mouth, and gallbladder that which we ingest through the eyes. Man lives upon life. Some parts are nourished by the sun, the influence of the stars, the energy in the atmosphere, and also invisible fountains of nutrition by which the mind and spirit are nourished. This is Mary talking about the chi and ki and other invisible frequencies of light that perhaps only the clairvoyance can see. 14 is also intelligence of probation. This means that we learn and reach moderation and equilibrium through experience. Knowing is a word used frequently in Jinshin Jitsu. For example, now know myself or the art of the creator through compassionate knowing man. To know is to develop certainty through experience. So <clears throat> according to the vibration of our full teens, we will attract experiences to digest and to teach us as we walk step by step through our lives. Ruminate on that, if you will. Matthias Roth, 
14 is man. It is the mind. Waistline 14 represents the mind, the words that we use. And Matthias says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Heaven 13 is created first, that's bus line, then earth 15. Hip line, at last, man 14. So it is in the order of creation, the manifesting. First the surface flows meeting at central 13 are created, then the deep flows meeting at central 15. The last to enter the realm of manifestation is man, the middle flows, with central 14 as a meeting place. 14, the mind stands at the beginning of our story. It is the source of all bondage and the source of all liberation. Yes, the words that we use, the message that we relay, can either bind us or liberate us. Think about it. Think about the words that you use every day and the effect that they have on your body and on others. Maybe you're more conscious of how they affect you than others, but it's good to be aware of both because words are very powerful energy and they can, they're like um, these packages of golden light which can reflect good understanding, good, clear, honest, harmonious thinking or negative warped perspectives. Think about it. So finally, we have um, insights from Waltraud Rigger Krauser from Germany. 14 brings equilibrium. 14 is located in the middle of the body and unites within itself waist up with waist down, heaven and earth, spirit and matter. And she said, it's not that man is located between heaven and earth, but he contains spirit as well as matter. Yes, we are <clears throat> a spirit experiencing matter through a body. Basically, we need both. Our spirit is incarnated to be expressed as man or human rather than just staying with that gender. If we understand that we are created equally of both aspects, then we understand human and the world. 14 is human through which both aspects of life are expressed in the individual color of the personality. 14 helps us to understand and to digest. So without further ado, let us look at the practices that we can do to help us connect with the frequency and energy of the 14. And let's see if I can move myself. Yeah. Okay, so what we have here with the finger holds, is holding the left or right ring finger. Mm -hmm. That is where um, safety energy lock 14 can be harmonized on the fingers. And then we have the 19s, although um, it looks like the high 19s. It's actually those 19s in the elbow joint between the tendons there. And the 19s help open the 14s. In fact, the opposite 19 and the opposite 14 or the 19 and opposite 14. And then we also have jumper cabling number 19 with the opposite thigh. Well, that's actually not the high one. It's actually the one. It's 19 and the opposite one. So there we have um, three major practices, which will do nine exhalation inhalations for all um, three. And as you go along, go along, you may find that one practice is more harmonious for you than the others, in which case you can stay with or you can continue and experience the others. And then the last set of four um, of, the, of the four, um, the nine breaths, we will just choose one of those particular practices to do the final nine exhalation inhalations. For people who are new, 
In Jin Chin Jitsu, a breath is a full body breath. We exhale from the back of our head, safety energy lock four, down the front through our hip line, the fifth beam, the hip line, and all the way down to the big toe. And then the energy of the inhale as we receive cosmic purified energy goes from the big toe through the 15 and the two, the hip area, pelvic girdle area, back up to the four in an oval. This oval actually is a positive turning spiral and it goes from clockwise to clockwise. We're talking about the positive energy moving in a positive way, cleaning us up so we can build something new and bringing in more positive energy to spiral back. And here we have that perfect example of heaven and earth and the four teams in between is that heaven is the head and earth is the feet and the four teams, they just about represent the middle point, the midway. But as Walter Trout says, it's not that we're in the middle, we just partake of the same breath. We are soul, essentially, that takes on a material form. So enough from me. Let us begin the practice. Sit up as straight as you can. Relax. Turn off your cell phones if they're on. And choose left or right ring finger. And I will suggest we do a bit of research, a bit of inspection, because different parts of the fingers are often more tense or tight than the others. And that may give you your decision of which side of the body to work with, which finger to work with. When you've made up your mind, first decision you make is normally the right one. Hold that finger, close your eyes, exhale, drop shoulders, smile, and allow the energy from the heavenly realms to descend through your fours, down through the full teens, into the fifteens, to the sevens, big toes, and back up, and of course circulating through that ring finger as it does. Here we go. Nine exhalation inhalations. And as we're exhaling, we're letting go of dirt, dust, greasy grime, that which we don't need, cleaning out, cleaning up, and then forming the new. And as we inhale, the cosmic purified energy, 360 degrees, earth through to heaven, is further purifying us in order to begin that cycle of letting go all over again. No particular way of breathing in, out, out through the mouth, in through the nose, not necessary. Whatever comes natural to you. And you do this at your own speed. And as this process continues, feel yourself relaxing, the muscles melt 
away the tension. Feel the fluidity of the water element as energy moves down and the strength and purpose of the fire energy, fire element as the energy moves up. Water finds the lowest point of the ground, fire the highest point of the heavens. And then when we reach our ninth exhalation inhalation, just pause go into the zone or the space. We talk about the nine as the end of the cycle, beginning of a new. Also, it represents ninth depth, the space. And it's in space that we transform. In space, we trust. In the gap. Just observe how you feel and where you feel, what you feel in the body. And that gives you some indication of maybe freedom in that area or maybe blockages where you need to work a little bit um, to release blocks okay so then let's go to the second practice unless you're really happy with the first and we're just going to place our fingers cross our hands cross our arms place our fingers in the left hand into the right elbow between the tendons and left into sorry right hand into the left left into the right and you can rest those elbows and those arms under the 14s on ribcage so you get more bang for your buck two for the price of one so close eyes exhale drop shoulders here we go And as you move with this pattern of releasing on the exhale and receiving on the inhale, sooner or later you may feel a pulse that the energy locks you're holding. This is the energy pulse. It mirrors the blood pulse, but it comes before the blood pulse. The blood follows the energy or chi. And when you feel that pulse, you know that energy is flowing congruently between those energy locks. And that's what we want. Congruency, harmony. Peace. When we fill our mind with too much thought, we get indigestion, mental indigestion. We seek harmony and peace, sustenance, equilibrium. We want our words to have meaning, but harmony. We want them to affect the harmony of our environment, our personal and our impersonal environments. What comes out of our mouth can create more issues and challenges if it's not harmonious. Remember that the words we speak, they tend to have the most positive or adverse effects on our personal and impersonal environment. Just let go as you breathe out and receive as you breathe in. It can be a beautiful experience, but we're not judging. Your experience is your experience. And just let it be your experience. No competing, no comparing.
And as we come to the ninth exhalation, inhalation, again, pause, go into the space, the neutral zone, and just observe. How do you feel now? Where do you feel now? And you know, it's okay to feel any of the emotions because as we let go and as we receive, things may be revealed, old hurts may be revealed, and that may create some discomfort. Just breathe through it. Or you just may feel very harmonious and happy and want to jump up and down and go boo or moo. That's fine too. No judgment. The mind's good at carving things up and judging, but when it's in harmony, it's in neutral. Okay, third practice. Keep one of those hands on one of those 19s and the other on the inside of the right or left knee, according to which elbow, which 19 you're holding. Or if you're still on one of the other practices, fine, you stay with it. So it's this opposite effect, as you can see in the diagram. And we're going to exhale, drop shoulders nine times. Here we go. And don't worry if you're not feeling that pulse I mentioned earlier. And, you know, 36 breaths is uh, a dimensional configuration that Mary Burmeister used to help us get an experience of moving from the subtler to the more dense realms. But these cycles of nine can go to as many cycles as you wish in order to experience this pulse. This is just... One way, just one example. You are the artist, be your own testimony. Experience and experiment. And again, as you come to the ninth exhalation, inhalation, slip into the neutral zone and just observe. See how different you are from the 27 breaths before. And now the final nine exhalation inhalations, you can either choose one of those three practices and do another nine sets or you can give yourself a hug and you just place your fingers underneath your <clears throat> your armpits here with the fingers on the side of the shoulder blade left and right with the thumbs underneath the shoulder girdle or you can basically take one hand away and put it on the thigh if it's uncomfortable to do it any other way. So I'm going to give myself a hug. Nine exhalation inhalations.
And see if you can notice now that the energy is moving down all the way through to your feet and feel your ground because as we complete these practices we don't want to be stuck in our mind in our head in our full teens we want to have that complete oval from head to toe skin to bone and the freedom for that full body breath to allow us to think speak and do harmoniously often we don't because of these blockages so a good way to begin to move them is this whole body practice this whole body breath practice and of course the breath is bringing in light which feeds ourselves so it's a win-win situation And in your own time, when you reach that final ninth breath, the 36th of the four, again, just go into a neutral zone and just experience where you be now, 36 breaths after. And, you know, dependent on your lifestyle, if you can, Endeavour to maintain the experience of peace or silence or harmony, which hopefully you have reached during this short practice. Don't let it get spilt too quickly by rushing out into activities that might disturb your equilibrium, your sustenance, your fortune, your mind. Now, to recap, recently I've been murmuring along about um, ideas of transformation of Harmonize to Energize. And some of you have written to me, some of you are concerned at the possibility there might be a fee. Others want to know, well, how would I pay it? And so thank you for the feedback I've received so far. At this moment, there is no plan to have a fee. It's a discussion. Um, it'll also be something that we will only introduce if it's for the, the best and harmony of everybody. But what we will definitely be doing at this time is reducing the number of sessions of Harmonize to Energize from two a week to one a week. It'll just be on a Friday, but it'll be slightly longer. It'll be 40 minutes. The Wednesday version will alternate in terms of subject matter. So on a Friday, one week it will be practices and if I have a storyteller um, another week it will be a story so you're still going to get the same themes but it's just going to be on one session instead of two a week um, and there's something brewing that may um, begin on another day during the week um, which I can't say because I don't know enough about it and I'm not involved um, but I'll let you know when that happens and then you'll still have two sessions a week. But until then, um, the last Wednesday is going to be, um, I believe, next Wednesday, um, where we'll have um, some guests. I'm quite excited. We're going to have a couple of guests. And then the Friday-only version begins on February the 18th. So that's it from me, um, but maybe we'll have a quick look and see what the um, faculty are up to um, with classes, webinars. Let's have a quick look. Um, and what is coming up on February the 5th? which I believe is tomorrow, I think. Reversing increasing of the depths and beyond with Walter Rodriguez Krauser. So that's Saturday and Sunday. And we read some quotes from Walter from the main central. And 
here is the topic and the information is here water art explores the bigger picture in which these flows are embedded focusing on man's harmonized life story and beyond and a little bit about wall trout here here are all the class dates and times registered today 175 your organizers are carrie and susan you'll get a replay excuse me for three months and then finally if you've not had an opportunity to see any of these webinars live you can see the replays and you click on all these links and they're the same fees that they were live but you get them again for three months and a quick reminder for those of you that want to be practitioners two five-day basics online plus one live will give you the requirements to become an authorized Mary Burmeister Jin Shin Jitsu Institute practitioner. So there we have it. Okay. So thank you, everybody, and um, have a good rest of the day, week, until next Wednesday, which will, as I say, be the last Wednesday version currently of Harmonize to Energize, but we have, um, I believe, we have two, mis two mystery guests. So we'll look forward to that. I know I will. Um, and Grace, any insight into why? Oh, yes. Um, by the way, as Harmonize to Energize gets extended to 40 minutes on a Friday, we will have time for questions. There's even some suggestion that we might move to Zoom. I don't know whether that's going to be enjoyed by everyone. So at the moment, I'm going to stay with um, webinar jam. So we'll see. Um, any insight into why why we don't hold the full teams? Oh, hmm. yeah, it's a little bit like the 14 flow, Grace. Um, if you notice when Mary um, describes the 14 flow, you're holding every safety energy lock except the 14. I think it's very simple. I think she wanted to introduce us into alternative ways of assisting opening the 14s. You can hold the 14s, of course. You know, when you're doing that hug, you can slip down to the 14s. Of course you can. And the 19s um, are right there in alignment with the 14s. I haven't heard any specific reason from any instructor why she didn't offer that as a self-help in this particular case or she didn't um, for the flow, the 14 flow. But I'm sure there was method to that decision. I'm sure she was introducing it for a good reason. Maybe Master Marai pointed out something about the need to work around the mind. Um, you know, it's like our mind can um, easily get rigid. Maybe working around it, we can scramble it. Maybe it gives us a broader sense. We open up the 19s. We open up the finger flows. We can maybe breathe more easily rather than moving in there like that on the 14s. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just looking at it from perspectives that appeal to me. That'd be something you can ruminate on, Grace, and maybe ask um, an instructor who may have ruminated further than I certainly have. Um, but I'll check into it myself. So Grace said, no Zoom, please. Yeah, well, I understand that. Um, because some people would prefer not to be filmed with their face. Of course, you know, you can always turn the video off. Um, Jeremy, um, any update about in-person five days? Well, at the moment in America, there aren't any, and there may be. I think there's one coming up in June in Oregon. Um, again, the faculty, the administration, we keep our eyes on the news and watch Different, what different states are saying, the governors, the restrictions, all the different venues. We do our best to keep up to date. And if it's not feasible, it's still a risk. You know, we have to think about a policy of are people feeling safe when they come to our classes 
because there's various restrictions and some people don't agree with those restrictions. So we're, we're looking to find the harmony again, the balance. And believe you me, we want the in-person classes to return. In the meantime, my suggestion, folks, is do the online work, the webinars, and, and bring a friend and do it with a friend. Even if they don't pay for the course, invite them to join you so you can practice on them. Because even when you do the live classes, the idea is for you to go away and spend time practicing on friends and family until you've done three, and then you can put your shingle out and charge a fee. But just practice cats, dogs, plants, people while the webinar is on. While the, you know, you'll notice the teacher might have their daughter or a, or a friend that they're working on. Why don't you have a friend? That gives you an opportunity to feel textures on the skin. It may become more embodied for you, more meaningful if you do that. Don't feel you just have to do it by yourself. And who knows, your friend might want to contribute to the cost and might want to learn it themselves. And they might be extremely grateful that you invited them. And, you know, <clears throat> there's lots of benefits to sharing, right? So think about it in that way. Yeah, any more questions? No, um, I don't think so. Well, anyway, peeps, thank you for peeping in with me. And uh, thank you for the compliment for the screen behind with the cherry blossom tree. I thought maybe it was um, going to be a little bit more interesting than just plain white. Um, little blue fan in there to remind me that summer's coming. <laughs> I shall turn it on. Summer in Arizona? Well, that's another experience. Um, all right, everybody, take care. Be safe. Be well. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. And exhale all the issues that really you don't need in the moment because the mind will hold on to stuff until you let it go. Learn to let it go because the cosmic intelligence, which is what you breathe in, the cosmic purified energy, has the answers when we're relaxed. I'm not saying the mind can't process our thinking, of course, but it can sometimes over-process we can get so full, we're over-processing. And that creates fog in the brain. We don't think clearly. And then we might get indigestion. All right? So hold your 14s, 19s, or your ring finger. Bless you all. Be well. Take care. Enough from me. Until next Wednesday um, with the final Wednesday Harmonize to Energize story version until we go to the Friday. And now it's goodbye from him.